Community Preservation Act is a program that really enhances a community's quality of life. Typically, most municipal budgets are allocated to things like police, police, fire, municipal services, but CPA is for the things that make community character and make the quality of life terrific. CPA is just a natural fit for uh, the climate of funding and uh, the needs of Pittsfield and uh, the needs that I hear from a lot of residents uh, and the things that they want in their parks and their neighborhoods and some of the improvements that we're looking for as a city. I'm a lover of architecture and history and I just feel like for years we've lost, Pittsfield has lost so much of our buildings. And we were looking for tools that owners could could use in order to avoid demolishing and the, the CPA, the Community Preservation Act, is a funding source that gives owners an option so they don't have to first demolish. They can look for alternative ways to use these beautiful buildings that work in our, in our city. Hi, I'm Stuart Saginaw. I'm the director of the Community Preservation Coalition in Boston. We're a statewide nonprofit organization, so we're pleased that Pittsfield is considering CPA. The Community Preservation Act is a state law that was uh, enacted in 2000. It was signed by Governor Salucci. It took about a dozen years for the state legislature to approve CPA, and it creates a dedicated fund in municipalities that can be used for only four things. Affordable housing, historic preservation, uh, parks and athletic fields, and active recreation, and then open space, meaning conservation land and protection of water supplies and things like that. So it's a restricted fund where communities have a local fund that is then matched by money from uh, a statewide trust fund, which is the real attraction of adopting CPA locally. And communities opt into the program. So although it's a state law, nothing happens until the voters in a community say they want to have CPA. What they're doing when you adopt CPA is creating a small surcharge on your local property taxes. Communities can choose the size of the surcharge that they want, um, and then that surcharge goes into a local fund. Matching funds come from the state at a varying percentage, depending upon how much money is in the fund at the time. And then a local committee is created in Pittsfield, if you adopt CPA here, and that committee then makes recommendations to the city council on what to use the funds for. So it's a local program. It has state funding as a match only for the communities that adopt it, but the control lies here in Pittsfield or any other community that adopts CPA. So CPA so far has been adopted in 161 cities and towns across the state, and there's been about 8,000 different projects in the 15 years we've had CPA. Uh, so far, and the variety of projects is absolutely incredible. Um, so let me give you some examples of what communities have used these uh, funds for across the state. In the historic preservation category, one of the most popular uses is for communities to do rehabilitation work to important uh, civic and municipal buildings. So uh, city and town halls, um, uh, concert halls, uh, any still libraries, schools, any sort of municipal building that needs rehabilitation work. Uh, for example, uh, you're looking at um, the dome on top of Needham Town Hall, which received a top to bottom rehabilitation, and that was a $15 million project, was the largest CPA project ever. Uh, and Gloucester City Hall also has the scaffolding on it on the big tower, the clock tower that was redone from top to bottom. Um, another use of CPA funds is to take uh, historic buildings that don't necessarily have uh, their original use anymore and then do what we call adaptive reuse into other things. So we've seen many buildings restored from old mill buildings into housing. And for example, they're in Middleborough, they're turning the um, factory you see in the upper right hand quarter into both uh, market rate and uh, affordable units. And we've had libraries such as the one in Cohasset with the columns there that's been turned into housing. And the folks who are doing a groundbreaking there are taking one of their old city halls in Chelmsford and turning that into a arts and recreation center. In the recreation category, one of the most popular uses is for parks, playgrounds, and athletic fields. Most communities have uh, these sort of uh, athletic facilities or parks, uh, but they haven't really been taken care of very well, and there's usually not a heck of a lot of extra money in the municipal budget to care for those things. So CPA money can be used to do a top-to-bottom rehabilitation 
or to build new parks, playgrounds, or athletic fields, particularly in areas of a city that might be underserved uh, by parks. So that's a very popular use of CPA funds. In addition, a lot of uh, areas are underserved or have dilapidated athletic fields. Um, we have the town of Randolph, for example, that had no playgrounds at any of its schools, and we had another community that had no athletic fields that were close by to the schools. And with CPA funds, they were able to build those playgrounds and athletic fields uh, next to all the schools they had in town, and therefore we have more money in the school budget for the mission of, um, of protecting uh, and uh, training the kids. Uh, we've had rail trails used for uh, CPA funds, skateboard parks, uh, little pocket parks uh, in urban areas. So the parks and recreation category is very popular uh, in CPA. Related to uh, parks and recreation is the open space category. Um, this is an area of CPA where communities can acquire um, areas of importance that uh, need to be conserved. So um, typically areas to protect water supply, municipal water supplies is a very popular use of CPA funds. Everyone's concerned about drinking water. Um, areas were for hiking or biking or cross-country skiing, um, sensitive wetlands and conservation areas, uh, just general open spaces that really preserve the character of here in the Berkshires. That's a very important part of the character out here. And CPA funds can be used to purchase that land, put it in public ownership, and then allow the public to use those open spaces. Then lastly, in the housing category, um, CPA funds are very flexible. This is the most flexible category of CPA. And of course it can be used to build, uh, create new affordable housing, but in some areas that's not necessarily the need. And so there are other ways that communities can really help with their um, community housing needs, such as veterans housing. We've had a number of communities that have built small uh, group homes for veterans. Um, we've also had communities that have worked with Habitat for Humanity. Of course, Habitat is a very efficient builder of community housing because they use uh, sweat equity and uh, they build very uh, small units that are cost efficient. So we've had great success with communities across the state uh, working with Habitat for Humanity. Again, we can take uh, uh, former mill buildings or empty uh, brick buildings in many cities that are not being used and turn those into uh, uh, affordable housing or market rate housing. And in fact, um, we have an example in Easton where they turned an old shovel factory uh, into both market rate and affordable housing. So there's a lot of ways you can help with the uh, city's housing needs without actually building new units of affordable housing. One of the other last categories in the housing section is programs such as rental assistance or first-time homebuyer assistance, down payment assistance. Those sort of things can help uh, folks uh, afford their housing as well uh, as things become dip more difficult for people. When communities adopt CPA, what they're actually doing is voting on a small surcharge on their property taxes. And communities have varying levels of surcharge. It has to be anywhere from a half percent to three percent. And that's not um, a percentage of the property's value. It's a percentage of the actual uh, tax bill that's paid each year, less certain exemptions. Uh, for example, in Pittsfield here, uh, what's under consideration is a one percent property tax surcharge. Um, the amount of the, of the surcharge is calculated on the actual tax bill that taxpayers pay. It's not 1% of the property value. It's 1% of the annual tax bill. And certain things are exempt from that calculation as well. So for example, uh, most communities, and in Pittsfield here as well, will adopt a $100,000 residential exemption. So if someone has a house valued at $170,000, which is approximately the average value of a home in Pittsfield, um, with the $100,000 exemption, they're only going to pay that 1% CPA surcharge on $73,000 worth of value, or the tax on $73,000. Um, and the average for a homeowner in Pittsfield uh, comes out to about uh, $14 for the average homeowner in Pittsfield per year. That would be their a CPA surcharge. A little more if your home is worth more than the average and a little less if it's worth less than the average. In addition, um, businesses as well will have that hundred thousand exemption on their businesses so that really helps small businesses. And then lastly, um, folks who are of low income or seniors who are low income or moderate income will not have to pay the surcharge at all um, and they just apply at um, with the local assessor's office uh, for that exemption each year 
and uh, they are fully exempt from the surcharge in that case. One of the big attractions of CPA is that once you create a local fund and put your local tax surcharge money in there, there is a statewide trust fund that uh, sends distributions every November 15th, and those distributions only go to the communities that have adopted CPA. So only the 161 communities that have created a local CPA fund will get matching funds from the statewide trust fund. That trust fund uh, actually has a couple of funding sources. Uh, it primarily is funded by revenue collected at the Registry of Deeds all across the state. And then it has a secondary funding source if there is money left in the state's budget surplus. The past four years, the legislature has dedicated additional funding to that trust fund from the state's budget surplus. So the annual amount for the statewide trust fund ranges anywhere from about $25 million a year up to um, a high of $53 million. And that's split and distributed every year among the 161 communities. So last year, for example, every community that was in the program received a minimum of 30% from that trust fund of what they raised locally. So if a community uh, raised, um, let's say, $100,000 locally, they would have gotten a $30,000 check from the statewide trust fund. If they raised $200,000 locally, uh, they would have gotten twice that. So it was about a 30% match at a minimum for every community that was in the program last year. That percentage does vary every year, uh, but there is definitely matching funds available from the statewide trust fund, and they are distributed automatically every November 15th. The process to determine what the money is spent on is entirely done locally. There is absolutely no state oversight um, or approvals needed on spending the funds. Even the matching money that comes from the statewide trust fund is deposited in the local community preservation fund and it's all considered local money. What happens is a nine-member committee comprised of nine local citizens uh, reviews applications uh, for projects, and the applications can come from anyone. So the city's parks and recs department can apply, uh, the housing authority can apply, uh, parks groups can apply, um, historic preservation organizations, the historic commission, all sorts of groups, anyone out in the community and in the city uh, departments can apply for funding from the community preservation fund. The nine member committee sifts through those applications, uh, reviews them, uh, holds a public hearing and discusses them, and then makes recommendations every year to the City Council. The committee itself actually can't spend any money, but they do have to make recommendations on the projects, and the City Council itself can't spend any money unless the projects have first been recommended by the Community Preservation Committee. So the same process is used to approve projects, um, and all the money is spent here locally and stays, the decision-making stays here locally. Pittsfield considered adopting CPA once prior, um, about 10 years ago, and it was a fairly cl close election, but it did not pass. Um, since then, there have been a lot of changes made by the legislature to the program, uh, frankly, to make it much more attractive to cities like Pittsfield. Um, the legislature realized that CPA, the way it was created in 2000, wasn't as useful to cities as it was to uh, rural and suburban areas. So they made a number of changes in 2012 um, that have really worked very well. And actually, the most of the communities that have adopted CPA since 2012 have been cities. Uh, Fall River, New Bedford, Salem, Beverly, Somerville, Malden, Medford, um, and so on, have all adopted CPA since 2012. Some of the changes that the legislature made were first to the recreation area. Um, prior to 2012, communities could only use their CPA funds to create new parks, playgrounds, and athletic fields, or buy land for new parks, playgrounds, and athletic fields generally. And now communities um, are not prohibited in any way from using recreation funds on their existing parks. So you can fix up existing parks. You can rehabilitate existing athletic fields now. Um, and existing playgrounds, as well as building new ones. And of course, that's really important to cities um, who really have those assets available but not necessarily taken care of as well as they should be, and they want to fix those up rather than building new ones. In addition, um, as I mentioned before, 
there is a $100,000 exemption available on the surcharge for small businesses. That was not available before. And that's very important because you want to have uh, protection for small businesses who can least afford to pay the surcharge. And there are a lot of small businesses in communities like Pittsfield. And so CPA now is uh, more well structured uh, for those uh, types of businesses. Um, another change, for example, in 2012 was um, in terms of the reserve accounts. So CPA has very little restrictions on how you spend the money. There's really only one and it is that you have to spend or reserve 10% of your funding every year for open space and 10% for housing and 10% for historic preservation. Prior to 2012, the open space money could only be spent on conservation land. And of course, cities would rather spend that money in most cases um, or would want the option to spend that money uh, on parks, playgrounds, and athletic fields. And that wasn't possible. But now communities uh, can use their reserve account, their open space reserve account, for buying open space, but they can also use it for parks, playgrounds, and athletic fields if they wish. So those are just some of the examples of ways the program has changed in 2012. Um, in addition, there's now a second funding source um, for the past four years of the trust fund. So a lot of things are different than it was a long time ago. CPA is much better suited for city. The funding is a little more solid. Uh, it's a much more mature program now. There's a better um, uh, training available, better um, examples of what you can do with the funding, better best practices. So the program has really matured and become much more focused for cities, and that's why we're seeing more and more cities uh, adopt CPA right now. So many people regret what happened with this, the train station in Pittsfield. What else will Pittsfield lose if it doesn't invest in its future by voting yes for CPA? My name is Tammy Krakalici and I support CPA for Pittsfield. Vote yes on question five.